So let's start. First thing you guys want to do is uh, open up your Excel. Um, the first thing we are going to talk about is really the basic things you can do on Excel. So how I like to name Excel is for me, it's like a huge calculator. That's uh, how I personally, what I personally think of Excel. So the first thing you can do on it is uh, some basic calculations. So addition, subtractions, divisions, and everything. So let's try it out. Let's, for example, do to well, 2 plus 3. So we have uh, two numbers right here, and we want to make an addition of those two numbers. The first thing we want to do is click on the, the equal sign. Click on the first number, addition, second number. And as you can see, we have 5, which is our answer. Let's say right now we want to make a subtraction. And as you can see, we just changed the sign right here. And we have our answer, which is minus 1. If we want to do a multiplication, the exact same thing. As you can see, the answer is 6. And if we want to do a division, well, as you can see, that's the answer. If we have, for example, I don't know, some other numbers. And we want to grow our our calculation so what is cool about Excel is that it will make uh, the calculation itself but not only this it will respect the priority of operations which means for example it will make a multiplication before making an addition which is the priority of uh, operations and uh, no matter how, bi how big uh, the calculation is Excel will uh, still be able to do it so that's for the first part. Right now you know how to calculate, uh, well, how to do some basic uh, things on Excel, which are additioning, multiplying, dividing, and uh, yeah, subtracting. All right, so right now what we will talk about is uh, Excel functions. So once again, for those who are familiar with all this, you can jump to the next class. So the basic of functions, first of all, uh, you will need to have, well, if you don't have my Excel, uh, my version of Excel, I have the last one. Um, don't worry, we will not use all those functions right here. If you do, you can simply click on the formula and you will find out all the options of functions that exist. So as you can see, you have hundreds of uh, different functions that exist. You have even for statistics options and uh, for engineering, which is really, really cool. Um, for the rest, who can't find this, uh, this tab right here, it's not that hard. Well, uh, the functions that we will use, they don't require this tab. So you'll see it's, uh, you will be able to follow the course. So the first function, function we wanna talk about is the average. So what's, uh, well, first of all, what's a function? Uh, basically, a formula is when you calculate uh, something. So let's say you wanna calculate the average of uh, those numbers. So how, to cal how you will calculate the average of all those numbers? by using the formula of the average, which in this case will be making an addition of uh, those variables. So we'll addition all those variables, and then we'll divide it by the number of variable, which is four. So we select all our variables and we'll divide it by four. So this is the average. Right now, with Excel, you are able to calculate uh, the average way faster just by using a function and we will use in this case the function of average so we click on equal and simply write down average so just write down AV and you will be able to select it's the second one when it's done simply select the four numbers right here and click on enter and as you can see you have your average right there so it's very very simple and uh, that's only for four numbers but let's say you have hundreds of numbers let's try it out so what we'll do right now is you will write down the function random. So simply write down rand, rand between. What this function will do is simple. It will simply generate a random number between, let's say, 1 and 200. So between two numbers. It will generate a number between the first number right here and the second number right there. So we have a random number generated. What we'll do right now, we'll take the cell. We'll drag it like this. Select all those cells and drag them down right there. So right now we have random numbers that are generated. And each time we refresh the page, we will see some new numbers. So let's say we want to calculate the average of all those numbers. Simply write down equal and write down average. Here we go. 
we select all those numbers and we click on enter. So as you can see, Excel generated the average of all those numbers. So we'll write down average here. <clears throat> now let's say we want to calculate the max, which is the highest number of all those. We want to find out the highest number. So we will use the max function. So we'll click, we'll write down equal, then click max and select once again all those numbers and click on enter. So as you can see, we have the max here and each time we refresh the page, well, the max will change or stay the same depending on uh, what the new what the new max is. Same thing with the lowest number. Let's say we want to find out the lowest number, which is the min. We'll simply write down equal min and select all our numbers. So as you can see, the lowest number is one, which is min. So as you can see, a function is really just a way for you guys to calculate uh, way faster um, instead of making the calculation by yourself. So instead of you making this number plus this number plus all those numbers and divided by the number of numbers, uh, the average is automatically calculated. Another function that we will see is count. Let's say I want to calculate uh, how many numbers I have here. So I will simply write down equal count and I select all my numbers. And what Excel will do, it will calculate all my numbers. I have 260 numbers here. Same thing if I want uh, to calculate, let's say, the sum of all those numbers. Well, what I will do is simply write down equal sum and select all my numbers. So as you can see, Excel calculates the sum of everything and each time I refresh the page, while well, the answers are automatically refreshed. So those are the basic functions of Excel. For those who want to see more complex functions, they are, all, they are all here. So you have some other functions. We will not talk about all of them. It's going to take us an eternity and we want to jump to the data analysis part. So right now we have, uh, we talked about the basic functions that exist, but what about uh, some more advanced functions? So right now it's the part three of this course. Uh, we'll talk about more advanced functions. The first one will be the if function, then the if or function, the if error function, and finally the v lookup. So those are the four functions. Well, it could be v h lookup, but we'll talk about the v, which is uh, well, that's the most uh, common one that is used. Um, so those functions are functions of uh, condition. So let's say a situation of uh, two persons. So let's say we have uh, person one and person two, and we have the income of uh, those persons. So let's generate a random income for both of them. Let's say you will generate a number of, uh, let's say the, the income will be between 1,000 and let's say 25,000. <clears throat> same thing for the second person so we have two incomes that are generated so right now what we will do we'll, we want to verify if the income of person one is greater than the income of person two we will write down yes but in the other case we will write down no so let's write it down so for this we'll write down the if function so the first part of the if function is our logical test, which is the test that we want to, we want Excel to do for us. So logical test will be if this number is greater than this number, we want, so when it's done, you write down a comma, we want to generate yes. So to write a text, you have to write down those little things here. want to write down yes in the other case we want to write down no so here we go as you can see it's no because the income of the, per the person number two is greater than the income of person number one and each time we refresh well the answer will change or stay the same so as you can see every time that the income of person number one is lower than number two uh, the answer will be no so Let's say right now we have uh, more than two people. We have, let's say, four people. 
And instead of uh, calculating just, well, instead of doing just one condition, we want to have a lot of conditions. We want to verify if the income of person one is greater than person number two, or person number three, or person number four. We'll generate yes. Yes. In the other case, we'll generate no. So how do we do this? Um, simply write down equal. If then we have not only one condition, we have multiple conditions. So we'll use if or. Simply write down if, open your parentheses, then write down or. So our logical test will be the first one, because we have more than one logical test. We want to see if the income of person number one is greater than person number two, or the income of number person number one is greater than the income of number person number three, or if the income of person number one is greater than person number four. When it's all done, simply close your parentheses, write down comma. So that's our basically our logical text, the test in our if function. We have three logical tests. So the value if true, if one of those things is respected, well, we want Excel generate us yes. If none of those conditions is respected, we want Excel to generate no. So as you can see, the income of person number one is greater than the income of person number two. All right. Once again, the income of person number one is not greater than the income of person number two, but the income of number one is greater than the person number three. So once again, Excel will do the test for us. Last thing, if error. So let's say, for example, an error appears. So let me just uh, give you an example. So let's say you want to multiply five by a letter. So Excel will generate you an error right here. Let's say you want uh, you don't want Excel to generate an error. So what exactly you will write? You will write down if error. It will be the second one here. So if an error is generated in this calculation, let's say you want Excel to write down error. And we simply click on enter. So if there is no errors, Excel will make the calculation. But if we have an error, well, Excel is, will write down error because we decided this. We can uh, write down even bigger test, text, which will be, for example, this is an error. So that's it for the if functions. Uh, if you guys uh, need uh, to practice more, you can rewatch this part of the course. I tried to explain it uh, my best. Once again, it's really a question of practice for the if functions. It's complicated, but the more you practice it, the more you'll see it's going to become easy. Um, you will need it for the rest of the course also. It's very important for you to understand. The last thing we're going to see here is uh, the VLOOKUP. So it's uh, the function right here. So it's a function to find something. So let's say we have a small database of uh, persons. So let's say we have their name their family, their income. So simply write down uh, a basic database. Um, and income will generate random income once again between 1 and 20. All right, amazing. Okay. So what we'll write down, we'll write down the lookup. Instead of 1 to 20, we'll write down 5 to 25. I'm going to write down something bigger. It will be more interesting. All right. So when it's all done, simply write down equal here. So VLOOKUP. What is a VLOOKUP function? <clears throat> so this function is really for you guys to look for something. Let's say I want to look in this uh, table right here for the number 4. So I will write down, I want to look for the number 4, which we'll write down here. When we find out the number that is written here, we want 
we want to look for it. So we want to look for it in this uh, table right there. And what column we want uh, to generate. So the first column, the second, the third, the fourth. So we want uh, Excel to generate the third column. Let's say, for example, we want to look for it uh, family name. So it's an error. All right. Okay, perfect. So right here, we are, let me just write it down a bit uh, easier. Okay. So the first thing we have is the number that we are searching. Let's say we are searching for number five, uh, number five, number four, because we have only have four numbers. And we want to find the family name of uh, the person number four. How we'll do this? So we'll write down equal v lookup. We have our function here. So we are looking for this number, then comma, in uh, this database. So we select the whole database. And we want Excel to find, uh, well, to generate which row. So for example, Excel find a number four. We want Excel to generate the row number three, so which is FA4. And as you can see, the family name of the person number four is FA4. If I change his family name to two, well, it's going to automatically find the family name of the person number two. So let me explain one more time for those who didn't really understand. VLOOKUP is really divided in three parts. So we have our function. The first thing we will need in this function is uh, the number that we are looking for. So in this case, we are looking for this cell. All right. So when, where exactly we are looking for this cell? We are looking for this cell in this database right here. Okay. So we select. The second thing we do is select the database. All right. So when we select the database, Excel find out the cell. What exactly you want Excel to generate as an answer? So I want Excel to generate the third column. So the last ray is the column number. So from number four, I want Excel to generate the third column. So one, two, three. If I want Excel to generate an income, the income, for example, I will write down column number four, which is one, two, three, and four. Here we go. We have the income of person number seven. Uh, number seven, sorry, person number four. So that's for the VLOOKUP function. 